Shalom, family. This is Elder Jenkins with the King James Bible University. And I want to speak to you on the topic, if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Now, we know that the Most High God of Israel is a spiritual God. So everything that he says in his words, he's saying a spiritual meaning. He's trying to give us spiritual understanding. So we clearly know he's not talking about of anybody hungry with physical food and let them eat at home. He's saying of anyone hunger and thirst after his, his righteousness, his knowledge, his wisdom, his understanding, let them learn at home. This is what he's telling us. Don't go gathering up unto condemnation to these places of worship, learning about other gods. He said, if any man hunger, let him eat at home. Now, family, this is not going to be a long teaching uh, for the next month or so. I'm going to try to work towards doing some teachings catered for folks that maybe might just be coming into the truth and they might not be used to one hour and two hour long teaching. So I just want to give them a little bit of truth on the go and they can meditate on this word. Maybe, maybe it might be 15 minutes. Maybe it might be 30 minutes here and there, but, but the main thing is with whatever time we have to work with, we can give five minutes worth of truth, 15 minutes worth of truth, 30 minutes worth of truth, and get our point across what God's word is saying. So he said, if any man hunger, let him eat at home, meaning let him learn at home. So family, I just want you to just stay with me as we go through these precepts. And we're going to allow the most high God of Israel to lead and guide us. Uh, which way we must go. If any man hunger, let him eat at home. It's very important. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 in the 33rd verse. It says, Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. So he's saying when you come together to learn, tarry one for another. We're not coming together to do anything other than to learn of his word. And we're coming together with one mind, with one spirit, with one faith to the one true and living God, the most high God of Israel. It's his name. So he said, when ye come together to eat, meaning to learn, tarry one for another. Jeremiah 3 and 15. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So he said, when you come together, you come in together to learn. I'm going to give you pastors according to my heart, and their job is to feed you. Their job is to feed you not with trash not with slop, not with a, a bad diet, but their job is to feed you with knowledge and understanding. In other words, these scriptures, these dark sayings, these parables, these riddles, these allegories, this is their job. I'm going to give them the knowledge and their job is to feed you with the knowledge that I give them. So when you come together to learn, tarry one for another, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. For in them is the spring of understanding the foundation of wisdom and the stream of knowledge. See, the Most High, he's telling us this through the Spirit of Christ because he already done put this 
into his pastors, his ministers, his teachers. This is 2nd Andrews 14 and 47. He said, in them is the spring of understanding, the fountain of wisdom, and the stream of knowledge. Romans 15 and 1. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. For even Christ pleased not himself, but as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproach thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So this is our only job to edify you in the things of Christ. So you can learn what's expected of you and what's promised unto you. If you obey his voice, you can have the hope of this promise of salvation. This is what he's trying to tell us. Verse five, now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Yahawashah, meaning Christ the anointed salvation, that ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify Yahweh, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, meaning salvation to Christ. He's talking all spiritual things right here. That's why I say one mind, one faith, one God. Let's keep going. Second Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. So this is our job, family. We got to study to show ourselves approved because when we study his precepts, we know the difference between the spirit of Jesus or the spirit of Yahweh Shai, meaning the spirit of Christ and the man Jesus and the man, Yahweh Shai. And I'm using both names because I know it's a lot of Christians that's listening that don't really understand the name Yahweh Shai. So I'm going to have patience and work with you because Yahweh Shai is his Hebrew name. Jesus is his name translated into English, which is the language that we speak. So you're going to always hear me interchange those names out because I got some that know the name and know truth and that's the only name they're going to use or go by. Then I got others don't know the name. They only know the name Jesus. So I'm interchanging them out. But either one of them is good as long as you know who you're talking about. He says, study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We have to rightly divide this word of truth through his precepts. There's no other way we can do it. Isaiah 28 and 10, for precept must be upon precept. Precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line. Hear a little and deal a little. See, family, I'm precepting this word right now. And I'm going to try not to do a whole lot of talking. I'm just going to allow these precepts to do the work. But he's telling us precept must be upon precept. Line upon line, hear a little and deal a little. So you're going to see me using different books coming from different areas, but you're going to get a clear understanding of what's going on. He said, if any man hunger, let him eat at home, meaning let him learn at home. 
you can learn right in the comfort of your home the one true doctrine of the Most High. And this is what we're here to do, to feed you with his knowledge and his understanding. 1 Corinthians 11, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, meaning let him learn at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. See, that's the spirit of Christ speaking. He said, don't you come together unto condemnation. You're going up in these buildings and you're doing all of these forms of out of worship. You idolizing your leader. You idolizing the symbol of the cross. You taking your sons and your daughters to the uh, through the fire to worship Moloch. You doing all these different communions and different things, and you don't even find communion in the scriptures. You're doing all these out of worship and you don't even realize you come in together unto condemnation. He said, if any man hunger, let him learn at home that ye come not together unto condemnation. See, because if you and a part of that mix that's doing all these ungodly things and God clean pork and it's all right, you can eat it. We can worship him any day. We gonna just do it on Sunday. He say, don't come together unto condemnation. He said, the rest will I set in order when I come. You just be cool. You stay right at home. You learn these precepts. You make sure you be in attendance every time a teaching is going down. You take notes, you study it, you go through it, you check it, you make sure it's lining up, you make sure you get an understanding of what's going on. And the rest will I set in order when I come. He didn't tell you that you have to prove anything to your family members. You don't have to prove anything to a place of worship. He say, if you hunger and thirsty for his righteousness, for his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, learn at home. And he want you to learn at home so you do not come together unto condemnation. I just had to sit there for a minute because I want to make sure this thing stick. See, sometimes you can be so close to something and you don't see no wrong in it. But when the most high God of Israel get a hold of you, and when his spirit start uh, convicting your heart and start making you sober-minded and pulling you away from some of these strongholds, when you look back where he brought you from, you can clearly see the condemnations. He said, the rest will I set in order when I come. So the only one you got something to prove to is him. The same spirit that's speaking. The most high God of Israel. Let's keep going. Ezekiel 8 and 12. Let's see what our forefathers were doing. Some of us doing it even right now to this day. Ezekiel 8 and 12. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients, meaning what the elders of the house of Israel, do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery. Now keep in mind, the Most High told us back in the book of Genesis that he formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed into our uh, nostrils the breath of life. 
And he also told us in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, that he made us in his own image, meaning we should have the characteristics of God. But he say, the Lord see it, or he said that every man in the chambers of his imagery. So instead of them being in the image of the most high, they was in the dark doing things towards their, their own image. In other words, their own likeness. They didn't want to do things according to the likeness of God, the one who created them, the one who told them to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy, the one that told them that swine and shellfish is an abomination unto you. They wanted to do things according to their own likeness. They don't see no wrong with those things. He said, for they say the Lord sees us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Talmud. So they was in the synagogue of God, the Lord's house, and they was weeping for Talmud. They was weeping for a false out of God. And this is what a lot of us doing right now to this day. We praying to a God. We shouting to a God. We hooping and hollering about a God, but it's not the most high God of Israel. So who you preaching about? Who you shouting to? Who are you praying to? Because he's sitting there telling us they was weeping for Talmud. And when we flip this verse spiritual, in verse 14, spiritually he's speaking, then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, meaning to the gate of your heart, because you are the temple of God and the spirit of God supposed to be dwelling in your temple because ye are holy. So in your body, in your temple, you was weeping for Talmud. This is what it's saying spiritually. Forget about the physical building. Let's look at spiritual things. He tells us right there in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and the spirit of God dwelleth in you? And if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, because the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are? So he brought me to the door of the gate, meaning the gate of your heart to the Lord's house, which was towards the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Talmud. Verse 15, then said he unto me, has thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. It goes Sunday worship right there. Sun day worship. Sun, S-U-N, dash, day, D-A-Y, worship. And we already know how this started. We already know who changed it. It's written 
in record books, you we know that Constantine, these Gentiles changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday, Sunday worship. We know this. We know the Romans was the last captivity and how they changed a lot of times and seasons and dates and calendars. We know this. Sun day worship. Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? See, he already know who he going to punish. He say to the house of Judah, you might as well say to the house of Israel. Doing sun day worship. For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. See, the most high is hot right now. The most high is hot and he's finna get in our butts because we caught up in sun day worship. We don't know how to rest and meditate on God's words on the Sabbath day and keep it holy. We want to do our pleasures. We want to do business as usual. And he already told us that it's supposed to be for a sign between him and us to keep the Sabbath. But we can't wait to have our sun day worship. And we place in our minds that it's all right, it's okay. Any day and every day is a day to worship God. And any day and every day is going to be a day when he put his fury and burn us with fire when that appointed day comes. Because he got a reward for all the disobedient, all the stiff neck, and all the rebellious children of the house of Israel. Let's keep pushing. Ezekiel 16 and 22. And in all thine abominations and thy whoredoms, thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth. Meaning, when I place the law in your heart and place it on your mind. You had not remembered these things. When thou was naked and bare and was polluted in thy blood, meaning in thy life. See that naked and bare, meaning when you was just being sinful. And it came to pass after all that wickedness. Woe, woe unto thee, said the Lord God. Thou has also built unto thee an eminent place, meaning churches, edifices, some of them can hold 30,000 people. Some can hold 300. Some of them are just little storefronts that can't hold but 50. And you got it all fixed up and dressed up on the inside. And, and you, you just built your intimate place and has made thee in high place in every street. On every corner in any neighborhood, especially uh, Israelite neighborhoods, you're going to always find the liquor store, the church, and somewhere where you can buy some fried chicken. You're going to have a barber shop, a beauty salon, and you're going to have multiple, multiple churches. Whatever flavor you want is there. If Baptist your flavor, it's going to be there. If Pentecostal, your, your flavor is going to be the holiness. Your flavor is going to be there. If AME is your flavor, 
it's going to be there. Non-denominational is your flavor. It's going to be there. Whatever flavor that you like to uh, dwell in is there. He said that thou has also built unto thee an intimate place and has made thee in high place in every street. <clears throat> thou has built thy high place at every head of the way and has made thy beauty to be abhorred, meaning the law that I placed in your heart and on your mind, you have made it to be hated and has opened their feet to everyone that passed by and multiplied their whoredoms. You got your sign out front, just welcoming everyone to come on in. This is holy ground. Come on over here. The spirit of the Lord is in this place. We got the baddest band in all the town. We are one of God's good churches. You got all these different slogans and all these different catchphrases to get the people to come. We got the baddest lead guitarist player. We got the baddest keyboard. We got the baddest choir. Oh, our preacher can hoop and holler. You got to come hear him. We do all of these things to get the people to come. Thou has built thy high place at every head of the way and has made thy beauty to be abhorred, meaning you made the law to be hated because you're not teaching the law. You're not preaching my daughter. You're not giving them the knowledge and understanding. You teach them by another God. It has opened thy feet to everyone that passes by. Didn't he say he's married unto you, O ye backsliding children? And here you is whoring around with each and every one. Just open your feet to everyone that pass by. Any God that want to come up in your temple, you just open your feet to him and let him come right on in. The ancient and honorable and all his different spirits and, and different uh, um, gifts that he have. You let them come right on in your temple and multiply thy whoredoms. Deuteronomy 18 and 20. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods. Even that prophet shall die. And if thou shalt say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord have not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord have not spoken. But the prophet have spoken it presumptuously, thou shall not be afraid of him. See, the Most High got something for these that speaking all of these things. Oh, if you give a thousand dollars, he gonna bless you with this and he gonna bless you with that. He gonna heal your body. Oh, you got to sow your seed for what you want God to do for y'all of these foolishness things. See, that's why we run precepts over here at the King James Bible University because he told us, he said, when a prophet speak it in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. So when you speak precepts, it's what the Lord hath spoken, and everything that he's spoken shall come to pass. I don't have to fool you trying to get you to give your money to get a blessing. He said, precept must be upon precept, line upon line, 
he a little and they a little. See, the ones that they're working for is in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 15 and 16. It says, the ancient and the honorable, he is the head. And the prophet that teaches lies, he is the tail. For the leaders of this people cause them to err. And they that are led of them are destroyed. So the ancient and the honorable is Satan. This is the name that a lot of people don't know about. And he got ministers that can change themselves into the ministers of light. They can perform miracles and do all of these different things and have you believe in their ministers of God. But he's showing the separation, telling us what we need to be watching for. If any man hunger, let him learn at home. Ezekiel 8 and 18. Therefore will I also deal in fury, Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. See, when we run in these precepts, you can just remove me out of the way. I'm speaking the precepts of the Most High God of Israel. So what we're speaking will come to pass. I'm not going to promise you that he's going to bless you with a house or a husband or a wife or a Cadillac or a Benz. That's foolishness. That's material things because he's not worrying about nothing material. He only deal with spiritual things, trying to get your soul ready for his return. He say, I will have no pity. Though they cry in my ear, Lord, 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 please give me another chance, Lord. Lord, I didn't know. Lord, I heard them, but I wasn't sure. But Lord, please, I'll do it this time. He said, though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. See, family, the time is now. <laughs> because when that day of visitation comes, when that day of vengeance comes, if you had not made your calling and election sure, it's going to be too late. You can cry all you want. You can try to work a deal out with them all you want. It's not going to help you. If you come in together unto condemnation, Sun day worship. The most high say, therefore will I also deal in fury. My eyes shall not spare, meaning my spirit shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice. Yet will I not hear them. See, that second death is all of the ones that was written in the books, plural. When all of the ones that was written in the books have to go through that second death and get thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, Though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. See, I just want that to resonate. The Bible says it's going to be weeping and gashing of teeth. It's going to be torment like you ain't never seen before. These cartels ain't got nothing on what the most high gonna do. These mafias and 
ways that they do things to bring torment and and all of these things, they ain't got nothing on what the most high gonna do. Though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. See, if this word reach you, if you stumbled across this word, if you somehow or another found this word, you have a choice to make. We all have a job to do. When truth come to you, are you going to deny the truth? Are you going to have closed ears and closed eyes to the truth? Or are you going to study to show yourself approved? Ecclesiastes 51 and 26, put your neck under the yoke and let your soul receive instruction. She is hard at hand to find. Now, this is all spiritual, and I'm going to help you break it down. What he's saying is, put your neck under the spirit, meaning under the spirit of Christ. This is Christ speaking. And let your soul receive instructions, meaning my laws, statutes, and commandments, which is the spirit of Christ, the commandments of life, the doctrine of life, the law of life. He says, she, meaning wisdom, is hard at hand to find. This spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Ecclesiastes 4 and 11. Wisdom exalted her children and led hold of them that seek her. See, if you look in the seek wisdom, she's going to exalt you. Say, and led hold of them that seek her. But you got to be willing and ready to put in the work. It's more than just saying, I believe and then Jesus paid it all. No. You need to believe him enough by faith to obey him. Because you love him, and you love him because you obey him. See, faith without works is dead, them. They go hand in hand. Proverbs 8 and 14, this is wisdom speaking. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. It's Christ speaking. Verse 17, I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Verse 20, I lead in the way of righteousness, in the midst of the paths of judgment, that I may cause those that love me to inherit substance, and I will fill their treasures. The Lord possessed me in the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. When there were no deaths, I was brought forth. When there were no fountains abounding with water, before the mountains were settled, before the hills was, I brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, nor the fields, nor the highest part of the dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he set a compass upon the face of the death, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he gave to the sea his decree, that the waters should not pass his commandment. When he appointed the foundations of the earth, then I was by him as one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight. 
rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in the habitable part of his earth and my delights were with the sons of men. So this is the spirit of Christ speaking. This is the spirit of Christ speaking. The spirit of God. You don't see nowhere in here where this was saying this was Jesus the man. Yahweh shot the man. This is the spirit of God, Christ speaking. Ecclesiastes 4. He that loveth her, loveth life. And they that seek to her early shall be filled with joy. He that holdeth fast shall inherit glory. And wheresoever she entered, the Lord will bless. See, when that spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding entering you, he's going to bless you with knowledge. Verse 14, they that serve her shall minister to the Holy One. And them that love her, the Lord do love. Whoso give it ear unto her shall judge the nations. And he that attended unto her shall dwell securely. If a man commit himself unto her, she shall inherit her. And his generation shall hold her in possession. For at the first, she will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. So the spirit of Christ, that spirit of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding it has to try you to see if you're worthy of being able to be filled with them treasures of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. It's telling us right in verse 17, for at the first she, meaning wisdom, will walk with him by crooked ways and bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her law. For at the first, she will walk with him by, okay, yeah, crooked ways and bring fear and dread. I put the same verse, but I'm going to read it anyway. Dread upon him and torment him with her discipline until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws. Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. That's those hidden treasures, that's the understanding, the dark speeches, the, the parables, the riddles, the allegories, all of these parables that Jesus talked about in the four, uh, first four books in the New Testament, all of those are parables. You'll be able to unlock them using precepts. Verse 19, but if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. Observe the opportunity and beware of evil and be not ashamed when it concerneth thy soul. For there is a shame that bringeth sin and there is a shame which is glory and grace. Accept no person against thy soul and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. So we need to be following Christ, not man. And this is why it's so important that you study to show yourself approved. A workman need it not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Because of a man come and tell you something contrary to the word of God, you can correct him or know to not receive him according to the scripture because you already studied the word and you know what his precepts is saying. So he's warning us, accept no person against thy soul. Don't put all of your uh, 
trust in a man. He said, and let not the uh and let not the reverence of any man cause thee to fall. And refrain not to speak when there is occasion to do good, and hide not thy wisdom in her beauty. So if you have an opportunity to share this truth, share it. Hide it not. For by speech, wisdom shall be known. In learning by the word of the tongue. Verse 28, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord shall fight for thee. See, family, he already told us in Matthew chapter 10 and verse 22, ye gonna be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he who endured to the end, the same shall be saved. Now he's telling us, strive for the truth unto death. I don't care who hates you, your family members, your spouse, your children, your siblings, your co-workers. I don't care who don't like you because the stand that you have for the most high. Strive for the truth unto death. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look behind you. Strive for the truth unto death. And if you do these things, family, he said, and the Lord shall fight for thee. See, this precepts perfectly with Matthew 10 and 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he who endured to the end, meaning he who strive for the truth unto the end, the Lord shall fight for thee. The same shall be saved. And we know that means left behind, but that's another subject for another day. Let's keep going. Romans 12 and 19. Dearly beloved, Avenge not yourself. You don't have to fight for yourself. It's certain things that you only need to do according to the spirit of God. He said, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. See, you got to know how to let the most high get in front of you and you follow his lead, you allow that spirit to lead and guide you. The spirit of Christ. Because the Most High said he is a God of war. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Psalms one. 49. Praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song. And in his pray, and his praise in the congregation of saints. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion, meaning the children of Israel, be joyful in their king. Let them praise him, praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbre and harp. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Psalms 148 and 13. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. He also executed the horn of his people, meaning he also executed the lineage of his people, the line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the lineage of his people, the praise of all his saints, even of the children of Israel, a people near unto him. Praise ye the Lord. Let the high praises of Yahweh be in their mouth 
and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with feathers of iron to execute upon them the judgment written. This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Ecclesiastes 39 and 28. There be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sore strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hell and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword punishing the wicked to destruction. They shall rejoice in his commandment and they shall be ready upon earth when need is and when their time is come they shall not transgress his word keep in mind he said vengeance is mine i will repay said the lord verse 32 therefore from the beginning i was resolved and thought upon these things and have left them in writing all the works of the Lord are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season. See, he have a season and appointed time for everything. Just like he told us, it's a time to be born. It's a time to die. It's a time to be merry. It's a time to, to be sad. It's a time of peace. It's a time of war. He told us over there in Ecclesiastes, it's a time for all of these things. So he said, all the works of the Lord are good, and he will give every needful thing in due season, so that a man cannot say, this is worse than that. For in time they shall all be well approved. And therefore, praise ye the Lord with the whole heart and mouth and bless the name of the Lord Yahweh. So family, I hope and pray that someone was able to get something from this teaching. Maybe I might have went a little longer than what I originally planned on, but for the next month or so, I'm going to be focusing on shortening up my teachings for ones that's maybe just coming into the truth and just kind of feeding them with a, with a, with a spoon, you know, a long handle spoon and just wanting them to see the spiritual things that the Most High is trying to tell us, showing the separation between carnal things and spiritual things showing the separation between his one doctrine and all of these flood of doctrines that's upon the face of the earth because his one doctrine is clear when we follow his instruction he said precept must be upon precept precept upon precept line upon line here little and there little so family i Hope and pray that you receive something. Look forward to continuing to fellowshipping. And remember the word of God. Not my word, but the word of God. If any man, meaning woman or man, hunger, meaning you hunger and thirsting after righteousness, after his knowledge, after his wisdom, after his understanding, let him learn at home so that you do not come together unto combination. 
See, I don't have to go down the list. I don't have to go down the line. I don't have to tell you all of these condemnations that's going on inside these churches. Because if you look at the word of God with an open mind and an open heart and allow the word of God to penetrate in your heart, he will clearly show you all of the condemnations that's being done in the churches using his precepts. So I pray that you get this, you'll receive it, and you'll be converted unto his one doctrine and be healed from your wounds. Be set free in your mind so you can have a mind to follow Christ until he call you home. So I'm going to say a shalom to everyone. Hope you have a wonderful Sabbath. And until we meet again, shalom.